very good morning and a warm welcome to our 8.30 worship service. I pray that as we come this morning, we come with hearts that are ready to worship our risen Lord and the rock of our salvation. Let us rise and join together in our call to worship. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord and celebrate the God who is present among us. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord and proclaim with the world that the Lord is God. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord with songs of praise, for the Lord our God's eternal presence is forever amongst us and all his peoples. We sing with joy and praise his holy name, for God has done wondrous things for his peoples. Amen. Our opening song, In Christ Alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, flow from the fiercest what heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand In Christ alone, who took on flesh Fullness of God in hell of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. On that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. Ladies, please. together and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of Christ in me from life's first cry to final breath jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns and calls me home here in the power of christ I'll stand. You are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord of everything. Jesus, you are Lord of everything. You are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord of everything. Jesus, you are Lord of everything. You are righteous and holy, full of mercy and truth. Jesus, you are Lord of everything. Let's sing that from the beginning. You are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord of everything, Jesus, you are Lord of everything. 
everything. You are righteous and holy, full of mercy and truth. Jesus, you are Lord of everything. Cover me with your blood from Calvary. Give me eyes of faith so I can see All that's in my heart I give to you For only by your grace can I make it through You are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord of everything. Jesus, you are Lord of everything. You are righteous and holy, full of mercy and truth. Jesus, you are Lord of everything cover me with the blood cover me with the blood of calvary give me eyes of faith so i can see all that's in my heart i give to you for only by your grace can I make it through make it your prayer you are Lord you are Lord you are Lord of everything Jesus you are Lord of everything you are righteous and holy Full of mercy and truth, Jesus, you are Lord of everything. My Jesus, you are Lord of everything. I love you, Lord. I lift my voice to worship you. time together.
my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. seated now and let us each come before the Lord let us come with sweet offerings of our praise and our worship and our adoration to him Cover us, O Lord, with your blood from Calvary. Give us eyes of faith so that we can see all that is in our heart. Lord, we give to you. Amen. Let us join in our prayer song, O Jesus, I have promised. together. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. But Jesus, draw thou nearer and shield my soul from sin. Men, please. Oh, let 
Let me hear thee speaking in accents clear and still above the storms of passion, the murmurs of self will together all speak to reassure me to hasten all. True Lord, that you are my master and my friend. You are master. You are master because you are creator. You are master because, dear Lord, that you love us, you made us, and you want us to prosper. You know, every Every master wants a servant to prosper. And I felt, I felt, I felt very strongly that the Lord wants us to prosper. I felt very strongly that the Lord wants us to be able to enjoy His blessings. I felt very strongly that the Lord wants us to enjoy His grace, His love. And today, today, you know, as I was preparing, you know, I, I saw someone that's going through, we have gone through an x-ray, you know, I, I believe it's um, a joint. It's either your elbow or your knee. Yes, you have gone through the x-ray and the doctors have given you and told you that you know there's some problems in those areas. But if you're a person, I want to pray for you. And I ask that the Lord will heal you today. If you're a person, you can just open your palms or you can lay hands to where the joints are, whichever joints are in pain, the elbow or the knee, you can just lay hands on it and let us pray together. You know, although the signs of the x-ray shows that there are issues there, but I declare, I want to declare in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, his name is powerful and His name, His name alone has authority and His name alone will be sufficient to heal you of that joint issue, that joint problems that you have on your body because He's the creator of your body. He's the creator of your entire being. He's the creator of all of us. I declare in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and I claim that healing upon you. I claim that healing to come upon you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, that let there be no more pain in the name of Jesus, that let those joints, those joints be healed. If you can just move, if you had a person, can just move that joint, can move it, just move it now, just move it. You know, wherever you're seated, you can just straighten it, your knees, or just move your elbows, straighten the elbows a little bit, and you know that there's healing, healing is taking place now, right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare. Your power, in the name of Jesus, we declare, dear Lord, your healing, your healing upon this person. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. There's another person, you know, you've been suffering loss of strength. You know, you feel that suddenly you're, you're, you're just not able to have strength in, those, in, 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 in the limbs. 
you're not able to have strength, you have lost quite a bit of strength, today you shall receive the power of the Lord. Because the strength, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Find joy in Him now. In the name of Jesus, we declare your joy is our strength. And in you, we will find strength. Not just strength in our, in our emotions, but strength also, dear Lord, in our physical. Strength also, dear Lord, in our being. Our spirit, may we have strength in you, Lord, because you are our strength. You are our strength. Strength not from anything that we have gained or eaten, but strength that comes from you. Your strength that is in us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your joy is our strength. Your joy, your presence. You know, I, I, when I, I just came back from, from UK. I wasn't around last week. And then the moment I stepped into this hall, I thank you for your sweet fragrance. I could smell your fragrance again. I, I, I so look forward to coming back to PMC. We thank you, dear Lord. Your presence is still here with us in terms of fragrance, the beautiful, sweet-smelling fragrance, Lord. We thank you that you have blessed PMC, dear Lord, in such a wonderful way to be able to smell your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we also want to pray for the world, especially for our money poor. You know, we heard of news that 50 churches had been burned down. Thousands were displaced. Hundreds probably dead. It's over, a fight over tribal rights. Between the Mete and the Kuki, we're going to pray, dear Lord. We're going to pray, dear Lord, for both parties, both sides. We're going to pray, dear Lord, that let there be no more war, Lord. Let there be no more persecution. We pray for a cessation, dear Lord, in all this violence. Lord, we pray. We pray for the cookie people, for Christians that, that, that has been suffering. As they are hiding and running away, we pray, dear Lord, for your bonus. Now, as I am preparing, I, I hear the word bonus. May your bonus, bear bonus in you, allow them to stand forward, to be bold, that Lord, that you are God. Jesus, you are God. To declare you and to glorify you, Lord, in the midst of this turmoil. We pray, dear Lord, may your name be glorified in the midst of this turmoil. And even for the Mete people, dear Lord, as they are persecuting the cookie, Lord, we, we pray, dear Lord, even bonus to those to be able to stand up and give grace, your grace. To have grace, Lord, your grace. May your grace be also be performed, dear Lord, be, be exhibited in the Mete people, dear Lord although they are persecuting, that they show your grace, your wonderful grace. And in all, in all this persecution and fights, dear Lord, we pray that may your name be glorified. May your name be glorified. Lord, we're going to pray for those hurting, those who have lost. We ask, dear Lord, that may your presence fill them, to, com to comfort them. May your presence fill them, dear Lord, to console them. May your presence fill them, dear Lord, to show your love because it is only by your love and through your love dear Lord can all this be delivered your love your love dear Lord is the power your love dear Lord is the only answer to all this persecution to all the churches that are being burned in the end it's your love that prevails your love dear Lord that will bring up and lift up souls your love so Lord we, we lift to you Lord all this prayers the situation in Manipur, Lord, we, we, we live to you. Let it cease. May your peace prevail through love. May your peace, it's a miracle to have your peace. It's a miracle that we are enjoying here in Singapore to have your peace. It's a miracle that we are enjoying here in PMC. It's your peace. It's your love for us. Your presence of the Lord is here. Your presence, your loving presence. We thank you, Lord, for your greatness. We thank you for your love. We thank you, dear Lord, that you love us so much. And you love the peoples of the world. You are our master and our friend. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. Good morning, church. 
Well, uh, Pastor Colin prayed about prayed for India. This is what is happening is in Northeast India. He was talking about the Metis. The Metis uh, is a uh, is the majority tribe. About seventy percent of this state of India, which is called Manipur, right? And the Metis are basically in, uh, Hindus, and then the 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 tri the other tribes. The hillside tribes, the, hill, the tribes on the hills are, are, are mainly Christians, about 30%. And now there's, there is civil war there. And that's why churches are being burnt. Churches are being burnt and many, many of Christian brothers and sisters have been slaughtered. The girls have been raped. So let's, let's pray for this, uh, continue to pray for this, for this land, all right? He was talking about cookies, the cookies. Not your um, eating cookies, but <laughs> the cookies uh, is one of the many tribes. There are many other tribes that are being also attacked, and the tribes are basically Christians. So you have this civil war that is that is happening, and to up to this point, I believe it started only a few days ago. There are at least fifty churches that have been destroyed and burnt. Right, so let's keep them in prayer. Right, let me also highlight about Family Day. Okay, 28th of May. 28th of May is our church anniversary. And we, as we begin our 91st anniversary, as we close our 90th anniversary, we want to remember the community around us. So we want you to take note of item number four in the, in the bulletin. If you have not signed up, go and sign up. All right, it's between 2 to 6 p.m. So some of the events are held in our sanctuary in, in our church. Some are held in the community center. This it is a joint event with the community. And our role, our basic role, and our hope for this family day is for us to connect the community and in the process invite them and share with them the Lord, all right? So, uh, 28th of May, which is Pentecost Sunday, 2 to 6 p.m. Also, for those of you uh, who sign up for the Unlabeled Run, please do, take, do note that, you know, uh, when you receive uh, an email telling you to go to go and collect your running pack, which is your T-shirt and, and the other stuff, all right? If you sign up using the, our PMC code, all right, you can collect it in church, okay? Because they will, they will come down to our church to do this distribution also, all right? So take note of that. And for those of you, okay, could I ask, uh, we are asking you not to share the unlabeled run code of PMC, all right, with others, because yes, I mean, they do get about $20, $20 discount, but you know, it is a privilege extended to our church. And uh, the moment they receive the, this code, the packs and so on would have to be collected from our church, okay? And so uh, if your friends from some other churches do that, do that, uh, use our PMC code and, and so on, uh, it may confuse distribution. So once again, the PMC code is meant for PMC worshippers and the collection point is here. And uh, so to help us, please don't share your code with people from outside, all right? So do take note of this thing. And the third announcement I have has to do with uh, the Greece and Turkey trip. Yeah. Okay. This, the, you see it there. The tentative date is from 26 November to 8 of December. And uh, for those of you who are interested, okay, this is not the proper registration, but I need an indication of interest in order to know exactly how many tickets and so on to at least reserve, all right? So for those of you who are interested in this trip, could you register your interest outside, all right? So th there will be a table there for you to register interest. This is not, 
Okay. This is not the actual uh, registration, but we need, uh, I need an indication of interest in order to know how to, how to go forward in terms of booking. Right. And finally, it has to do with Pentecost School. We are about to start Pentecost School again in a few months' time, and I ask that we play the video. Oh, it's not uh, there. Uh, we'll show it next week. All right. Well, at this time, we want to we, we want to uh, welcome those with us. First time, first few times, we want to acknowledge your presence. So, could I begin with those on the on the left of the church, as well as those seated behind? We have a package that tells you more about Pentecost Methodist Church. Could I ask you just wave at me? No? Okay, what about those on the right? Any with us for the first time? Yes, we do have somebody. Welcome. We are glad you are here. Yes, we are so glad you are here. Right, anyone else? Come, let's stand even as we greet each other in the name of the Lord. This time we also want to worship the Lord by the giving of His tithes and our gifts. The offering boxes are around. We want to give physically. At the same time, for those of you you want to give electronically, please uh, think. Uh, please note that the details are on the screen as well as in the notices that is pasted in, right in front of you. Okay, at the back of the pew. Come, let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you have given to us, given f f to us to, to use. And Lord, we want to remember that in the whole process, we want to glorify the Lord our God. Spirit of the living God, you just fall afresh upon all of us. Keep us in your love and care. And as we worship you in giving, you bless the gift, you bless the giver. And Lord, may we together extend the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come, let's give to the Lord. Come, let's stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavens. Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be
be seated. We'll invite Nancy to come and lead, read the Word of God. This morning's scripture reading is taken from Psalm 31, verses 1 to 8. Psalm 31, verse 1 to verse 8. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love, because you have seen my affliction. You have known the distress of my soul, and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nancy. Good morning, church. Good morning. You know, it's so good to see all of us here. And this morning, we're going to be starting on a new sermon series on uh, following the short series on how to relate to others. And we're going to be, in this series, we're going to be looking at the different images of God found in the Bible. And there are various images of God in the Bible. You know, how God is a warrior. He's a peacemaker. He is undoubtedly our heavenly father. He is a builder, and so on and so forth. And I'm really excited to get into this series because I believe that as we study the different images of God, we can get a richer, fuller, and deeper understanding of who God is, of who God says He is too. And I believe that this will deepen you know, our prayer life, our walk with God. And each time we go to God, these images would come up to our minds and our hearts. And so before we do anything further, shall we go to God in prayer and commit this time to Him? Let us pray. God, our Father, our Rock, our refuge, and our fortress. Incline your ear to us and hear our hearts cry to you, Lord. Come and speak to us, Lord. Turn us, move us, lead and guide us towards you. And may your presence be felt so strongly in this place and in our hearts. And truly may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, we are starting this series by looking at how God is like a rock, a refuge, and a fortress. You know, He is steadfast and secure, and it's a very uh, appropriate theme, especially since today is uh, later, later on in the, in the second service, we'll be having our enrollment Sunday for the BB and the GB companies. You know, but we, as we think about the image of a rock in today's world, it is quite different from the time of Jesus. You know, for example, if you go to the ever-reliable search engine of Google and you Google the word rock, you'll get a huge variety of answers. For instance, the top hit that when I did it had nothing to do with a stone. It was rock and roll. The very first hit on Google that Google had to offer, maybe it's because of an algorithm and I've been listening to such music, followed swiftly by this guy. The Rock. For those of us who are familiar with wrestling or action movies, this guy is known as The Rock or Dwayne Johnson. Okay? He's, 
he looks nothing like a rock, right? And then finally, we get to the rocks proper. But not quite the same image the psalmist has in mind, you know. We are shown of pebbles, boulders, and it's rather far from the image King David has in Psalm 31. You see, in Psalm 31, David writes in verse 2, Be a rock and a refuge for me, a strong fortress to save, to save me. And in those words, the image of a mountain, you know, a fortress, a fortified stronghold comes to mind. For those of us who have been to Israel, perhaps some of us would think of a place like Masada, you know, a fortress high up in a mountain, unreachable by enemies and safe from danger. Or like a place like Petra, for those of us who went on the latest trip, you know, a city carved in the rocks in the gorge, and definitely not like this mushroom rock over here, very small, but a lot bigger than that. And so when David writes those words, this, this image of a fortress comes to mind, you know, a place of defense, a place of safety, a place where he is safe from harm. You know, but as we look at Psalm 31, God is so much more than simply just a place of safety. God is so much more than just a rock and a refuge. And here's our outline for today. You know, God is our rock and our refuge, undoubtedly. The second point is, you know, God is more than just a rock and a refuge. And lastly, He is breakable yet unbreakable. Breakable yet unbreakable. And so right out from the gate, you know, we read from the psalm that God is our rock and our refuge. But as we continue to read on in the psalm, we find out that God is so much more than just that. And so firstly, our first point is, you know, God is our rock and our refuge. You see, David begins the psalm with a location. Verse 1 reads, In you, O Lord, in you do I take refuge. In you do I take refuge. And these are such strong and direct words. In you, O Lord. And that also means that, you know, he is running from nowhere else. He is not going anywhere else except to be in the presence of God. And that is the first step of what it means for God to be our rock and our refuge. That's the first stroke of the brush, you know, to paint the image of God being our rock and our refuge. You know, we run to nowhere else, no one else but God Himself. And this is very significant when we consider that David was the king of Israel. There were plenty of places he could run to. You know, there was his palace made of cedar wood, you know, the finest in the region. There were his fortresses, you know, his strongholds, his other residences, his encampments. But despite all that that was available to him, David chooses to run to God. See, he cries out in verse 2, Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. And this would have baffled the people of Israel. They would be wondering, you know, why would our king feel unsafe? Why would he need anything more? He is the king. You know, if he had to run to God to seek refuge, what more about commoners like us? What does he require that the kingdom cannot provide? And the answer to those questions lies in the words that David writes in the Psalms, in Psalm 31. You see, there are really two kinds of trials and difficulties we face in life, and we're all familiar with this. The outer trials, the trials we face physically, and the inner trials. Both trials are covered by David in detail in this Psalm from verse 10 to verse 13. You see, in verse 10 is a summary of the devastation of David, both his soul and his body. He writes, therefore, my life is spent with sorrow, that's an inner trial, my years with sighing, my strength fails, that's an outer trial, because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. And so his soul is wasting away in sorrow, and on top of that, he is physically fading. He goes on in verses 11 and 12, and they tell us that he finds no refuge from his enemies, 
And even those who were his acquaintances, they now avoid him like the plague. And on top of that, verse 13 tells us that his life is in danger and others are plotting to take his life away. In other words, despite so many options seemingly available to him, David has nowhere else to run to but to God. You see, his acquaintances avoid him, pretend he doesn't exist, and he surely isn't going to run to his enemies because they are plotting to kill him. And this can be true in our lives as well. We know we work so hard in our lives to build security, safety for ourselves. But there is a limit to what we can do. You know, we may possess all the resources necessary to ensure that we are safe from physical harm. We may invest in the best healthcare, live in the best, in the safest neighborhood in the country to make sure that we are covered. We may hold in our hands the widest network imaginable, friends and family. And, and don't get me wrong, these are all great things. But the best healthcare and the widest network may one day fail us. And our earthly resources are simply not enough to shield us from the outer and inner trials of life. And this is the experience of King David. This is where he's at. He's got everything at his disposal. And yet, he finds that there is no one else like God to run to. And God can be our rock and our refuge. He can, he will, and he did. You know, a fellow believer once said to me, there is no better place to learn about the mercy, the grace, the love, the presence, the comfort, the assurance of God than through tough times. There is no better place to learn about the mercy, the grace, the love, the presence, the comfort, the assurance of God than through tough times. You know, how profoundly true. You know, as I was preparing this message, the Lord brought to my mind back about more than 10 years ago when I was going through surgery for my heart. And back then, I don't know about you, but if you have been through surgery and you're on the operating table, it's just you right there and the rest of you know, the nurses and the doctors. There's no one else. You know, your, your family members are not allowed to be with you. And that's, that's you all there alone. And I recall that when I was on the operating table and they, and they inserted the, 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 the wires and all that sort of stuff, there was an allergic reaction that I had to one of uh, the medicines. And, and back then, I didn't know that I was allergic to this medicine, and so I started to become very itchy. I've never had an allergic reaction before in my life, and I was wondering, something is wrong, you know, it's very itchy. I keep telling them it's very itchy. They say, yeah, don't worry. You know, I'm, I, I'm telling them, no, you don't understand. It is super itchy, guys. Something is wrong. And I began to start scratching myself, and they were wondering, what is he doing, you know? <laughs> like, but I was telling them, you know, and then suddenly someone had this, uh, had the presence of mind to say, he's having an allergic reaction. And so, you know, back then I was panicking. I was panicking on, on the operating table. I was crying to God, you know, God, Lord, help me. And, and right there and then, you know, I, I, as soon as those words left my mouth, the Lord told me, you know, I'm, just two words, I, I'm here. I'm here. I am here. And he spoke to me at the operating table. And, you know, that really calmed me down, that no matter what happened, the Lord was with me. You see, church, God doesn't leave us alone. God didn't leave David alone. He brings David back to where it all started, David's relationship with God. And sometimes, you know, especially in the tough times, when we go to God and we seek Him as our rock and our refuge, many times He will bring us back to our relationship with Him. He will bring us back to our relationship with Him. And that brings us to our next point, you know, God is so much more than a rock and a refuge. God is so much more than a rock and a refuge. You see, there are at least two instances where we can see that God is more than just a rock and a refuge to David. The two instances, the first one is obvious and the second one is not so obvious. And so let's look at the not so obvious one. You see, in verse 3 and 4, they read, For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and you guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me, for you are my refuge. 
And so David entrusts himself to God even before he is vindicated. David entrusts himself to God, commits himself to God even before he is vindicated. He is facing outer and inner trials, and even before those trials are over, even before God does anything at all, David already entrusts his life into God's hands. And the order here is very important. It's key in unlocking this, the significance behind this psalm. David here, he is not negotiating with God. He's not saying to God, God, if you do this, I will surrender my life to you. No. Right from the gate, he is surrendering. In other words, David is committing his life to God, not for what God can offer him. David is surrendering to God for God himself. David is surrendering to God simply for God himself. He's not laying any conditions on God. He's not saying to God, God, I will serve you because you have saved me. No. He's committing his life into the hands of God, regardless of the outcome. And God is so much more than just a rock and a refuge to David. He is everything to David. And that is the not so obvious bit in this psalm. The obvious bit is found in verse 7. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have known the distress of my soul. You see, the key words here are the words steadfast love. Steadfast love. The hesed love, the covenantal love, the steadfast love. Despite whatever happens, David holds on to the covenantal promising love of God. Again, not so much of what God can provide for him, not what gives to him as a result of his allegiance, but simply for who God is. You see, the only way, church, God can be our rock and refuge is that we see that God is bigger than the storms in our lives. Let me say that again. The only way God can be, truly be our rock and our refuge is when we see Him bigger than the storms in our lives. When we see past what God provides and we love Him simply for who He is, that no matter what happens, whatever the result, we can trust Him because He is far, far bigger than anything this world can offer. And so David in Psalm 31 is asking God, what only God can do, and that is to calm the storm in his heart first. To calm the storm in his life by calming his heart first. And so David is not using God, he's not trying to use God as his rock and refuge simply because, you know, he just wants something out of God. But he's loving, he's surrendering his life to God for who God is. You see, the truth is, in our lives, no one likes to be used, right? No one likes to be a recipient of a love that is conditional on what we can offer. And when what we can offer disappears, the love also disappears. No one likes to be a recipient of that. And what more about God? What more about the one in whom we live and breathe? The one who holds all things together. And God's promise to us is that He is, He was, and He will be our rock and our refuge. There's no doubt about that. But as we read on in Psalm 31, it encourages us not to stop there because God is so much more than just a rock and refuge. And the key truth, you know, to summarize this entire second point is this. God remains God even when we don't feel like it. God remains God even when we don't feel like it. And the question for us this morning is this, you know, do we love God for who He is? Or do we love God because of what He can provide for us? You ask yourselves this question, do we love God for who He is? Or do we love God simply because of what He can provide 
for us. You know, if we take a step back and look at this psalm as a whole, now I love the fact that we, can, we, we are even able to read this, that David didn't leave anything out. I mean, you know, as he was probably telling this to, to a scribe or something like that, he could have omitted the part where he felt inadequate, the bits where it made him look bad. But he included those bits in. And in some of our Bibles, there's a heading to this psalm. It says, To the choir master, a psalm of David. To the choir master, a psalm of David. And that means that David didn't just want this to be written down and recorded. David wanted this to be sung, to be remembered, that the whole of Israel and subsequently generation after generation of believers to remember that God is our rock and our refuge. And on top of that, He is so much more than just our rock and our refuge. Now, some things are worth remembering. Some things are worth for us to take pause and to remember to, and, and to remind ourselves that God is truly our rock and our refuge. But more than that, God is God. And you know, the question for us really is, you know, do we love God for who He is or do we love God simply of what He can provide for us? Some things are truly worth remembering and singing about. You know, and that brings us to our very last point. God is breakable. The rock, as a rock, He is breakable, yet unbreakable. You see, the opening words for verse 5 would undoubtedly be very familiar to a number of us if we recall Jesus being hung on the cross. Because those were the very last words of Jesus, our Lord. He cries out on the cross, Into your hand I commit my spirit. Into your hand I commit my spirit. Right up to his final breath, Jesus clung on to the Word of God. Jesus clung on to Psalm 31. You know, it's easy to talk about God being our refuge and our rock if we're honest with ourselves, but it's another thing to all, all together to really commit our lives to Him when the time comes. And how then do we apply Psalm 31 into our lives? And I believe a good starting place is at the foot of the cross to look at our Saviour who hung on the cross innocently, look to Jesus and hear what He has to say, His final words, into, into your hand I commit my spirit. Look to Jesus, hear what He has to say. Look to Jesus and see His nail-scarred hands, you know, His parched lips, His crown of thorns. You know, we begin by saying that Fortresses, rocks, and places of refuge are places high up in the mountains. You know, we think of fortified gates, you know, thick doors, and heavily guarded walls. But as we look at Jesus on the cross, Jesus, He was none of those. The Son of God, infinite and true, was left hanging to die on the cross. The impenetrable fortress that is God was nailed to a cross. The unbreakable became breakable, and he was broken. And when he turned and cried out to the Father, the rock and the refuge, the Father turned his face away. Can we imagine that and just pause here for a moment? God, the rock and the refuge, turning away from His very own Son. See, Jesus had every right and all access to the Father, and He gave that up. He faced the rejection of the Father, and Jesus went through all of that so that we don't have to. Not that we deserve it, absolutely not. We deserve to be on the cross, not Jesus, but He held on. He held on. And because He did, He purchased our salvation and we are forgiven. Because He did, we can say with full confidence, Lord, You are my rock and my refuge. And He will not turn His face away from us. 
You know, there's a very subtle difference between the words of Jesus on the cross and the words found in Psalm 31. See, verse 5 in Psalm 31 reads, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You see the words in bold, O Lord, and that is the word Yahweh or Y-H-W-H. But on the cross, Jesus uses the words the word Father. And according to John Bloom, a writer and a theologian, the movement from the word Yahweh to Father is fundamentally one of the greatest summaries of the gospel message. You see, Jesus moves from the, sa the sacred covenantal love name of God, you know, Yahweh, a name that even the Jews would not even pronounce. And he brings that covenantal name and moves it into the most intimate name we can call God. And that is our Father, our Abba Father. And so this movement, although subtle, is extremely crucial and significant because Jesus embodies the covenantal and steadfast love. And it is through His blood that we can be brought near to God our rock and our refuge. It is through Him, it is through His blood that we are brought to God, our rock and our refuge. And so the question for us this morning is this, would we bring ourselves to God this morning as our rock and our refuge? Are there instances in our lives where we need to remember, we need to look back because we tend to forget that God was our rock and our refuge. Will we go even further to tell God that we love Him for who He is and not simply what He can offer us? Would we give our lives to Jesus who was broken so that we can have an unbreakable hope and assurance in God? And as we ponder about that, let us just linger for a moment in this whole idea of how Jesus, from Psalm 31, changes the words Yahweh to the word Father. And because of His death on the cross, because He died for us, we can now come to God and say, Our Father, for You are simply our rock and our refuge. And far more than that, Lord, Far more than just being a rock and refuge, God, we love you for who you are, not simply what you can provide for us. Let us go to God in prayer. Let us take some time right now to ponder about what it means for God to be our rock and our refuge. Perhaps some of us here, we are struggling with either an outer or an inner trauma in our life. Perhaps some of us, we are struggling with both. The Lord's promise to us from His Word is that He is our rock and our refuge. Would you move your heart this morning to pray the same words found in verse 1 of the psalm, in you, Lord, do I take refuge. And perhaps some of us, the Lord is tugging our hearts to relook at our relationship with Him. Perhaps for a long time, you know, we have been loving God simply for what He can provide us. And we find that when those things that He provides us are missing from our lives, our love tends to disappear from, from Him as well. Perhaps the Lord is asking us to come back and relook at our relationship with Him. And perhaps some of us here, you know, we've been looking at, we've been coming to church this whole time, but we have never really cried out to God as our Saviour. 
Some of us, perhaps, we've been coming to church just to tick the boxes or maybe just to feel good for ourselves. We've never really experienced what it means for God to be our Savior, our rock, and our refuge. Would we come before God this morning and respond to Him? Lord, we come before you this morning as your children, and would you forgive us for the times, Lord, that we have used you simply for what you can provide us. Turn us towards repentance and to your love, Lord. And for those of us who need that encouragement that, Lord, you are our rock and our refuge, Lord, we know with absolute certainty from your word that you are our rock and our refuge. So come and be, Lord, our rock and our refuge, not just physically, Lord, but in but our inner trials as well. Turn our hearts towards you and, 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 and deepen, Lord, our walk with you. And for those of us, Lord, who have perhaps never committed our life truly to you, Lord, we pray that this day we will make that decision to follow wholeheartedly after you, not for what you can, not only for what you can provide, but God, simply because we love you and we're so grateful, Lord, for what you have done, what Jesus has done on the cross. We ask, Lord, that you come and convict our hearts and change our hearts, Lord, and move us towards you. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, shall we stand? And let us sing the closing song together. Into your hands I commit again With all I am For you, Lord You hold my world In the palm of your hand And I am yours forever I believe in you, Jesus, I belong to you, you're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. With you wherever you go through fears and joy I'll trust in you and I will live in all of your ways and your promises forever Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I sing, the reason that I sing. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong. that I live, the reason that I sing, with all I am. Let's sing this again from the beginning. Right from the top. In 
into your hands I commit again with all I am for you Lord you hold my world in the palm of your hand and I am yours forever Jesus I believe in you Jesus I belong to you you're the reason that I live the reason that I see with all I with you wherever you go through tears and joy I'll trust in you and I will live in all of your ways and your promises forever Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong. that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. Truly, Lord, that is our prayer. That, Lord, we believe in you. We place our hopes, our trust in you, Lord. Wherever you go, we will walk with you through tears and through joy. Lord, we place our lives into your hands. And even as we come to your table right now, Lord, we remember of Jesus' sacrifice, how he gave up his body and his blood. And for that, Lord, we are grateful, Lord. We thank you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, in the moment's time, we're going to be celebrating the Holy Communion. And so can we ask that you take the elements out? And if you don't have the elements, you can just uh, kindly raise your hands. And the ushers will come to you and they'll pass you the elements, all right? Just keep your hands raised and they'll come to you shortly. Come, let us respond together with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from these all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. Make these gifts of consecrated bread and wine be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come, let's take out the bread. The Holy Communion is a sacrament and in a sacrament, grace is imparted. Let us thank God for the grace of wholeness, that Jesus paid the price to bring us wholeness. So let's thank God for what Jesus did at Calvary and how he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are all healed so let's ask the lord to release that grace of wholeness the grace of healing to come upon our lives let's do this in silence Jesus said, This is my body broken for you. Take it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let's open up the cup. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for the forgiveness of sins. Let us thank God for His forgiveness. And whatever grace you need to walk in this forgiveness, to walk in ways that will please and honour Him, ask the Lord to release that. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Amen. Come, let us pray. Lord Jesus, just as we have eaten as we, and we have drunk, we remember that because of your death, Lord, you truly are our rock and our refuge. And so when we go from here, we go in the confidence, God, that you are truly our rock and our refuge, and we can turn to you more so than the times, Lord, when we are in need. But you are our ever-present help, Lord, in our lives. And through, through the tears and through the joy, Lord, we'll walk with you. And as we go from here, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, 
and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen, church. Please be seated.